Okay, we're ready. I got it. So welcome back <laughs> to another edition of Not Taking Orders with Christina McAmer and my guest today, Lamar Ingle, good friend of mine, owner of the Wine Militia. And Lamar is actually Canadian, real fact. <laughs> uh, so in honor of that, we're running our show on Canadian time. So uh, in about three minutes, it will be six o'clock in Canada. So we're going to get started. Actually, there was traffic. That's not real. Um, so I'm really, really excited. Lamar, tell me about what the Wine Militia is. The Wine Militia. Well, thank you for having me on here. This is great. Um, Any time that I can drink wine after work is, is, a, good, is a good occasion. So or, the, during or, or during or work. Or during work. Or during work. Yeah. The Wine Militia are a group of kind of renegade. Um, is it on? Oh, it's, I, I, no, it's I like that. Like hands on. It's We're wearing mics I, this time. It's kind of different for us. It's my first day. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> no, so the Wine Militia, we are a group of um, kind of renegade wine aficionados, and some of us are sommeliers, but we put together really kind of elaborate sensory experiences and events for corporate groups, mm. um, mostly from uh, all over California, even Canada, but for the most part, they stay at hotels, and then they, they look for itineraries to be built, so we help mm. them with that, and then Got we it. also do wine dinners and just, things like that. Just corporate groups or private clients as well? Like private. What, if, what if I wanted to have like a wine tasting experience at my home? Could we do that? We could do That's actually how it started. Okay. That's how it started. Interesting. Yeah. So in 2008, uh, I was working for Francis Ford Coppola at Rubicon Estate. I've heard of and, Yeah. Great, uh -huh. great, uh, great brand. Now Engelmuck, yep. if you're not familiar. Or Rubinuck, if you're or just Rubinuck. confused. Um, Great brand, great wines. We had an amazing winemaker at the time, Scott McLeod, was making killer wines. So it was really easy to entertain people mm -hmm. um, and look like a rock star because they were doing all the work for you. You do actually um, kind of look like a rock star, right? I pretend to be. I appreciate I your t-shirt. I, I love that you. all of my guests have cool t-shirts. <laughs> I'm going to have to step it up here, but okay, don't no, let me interrupt you for No, that's real. okay. So, um, so what ended up happening is I'd have lots of guests come in and they would... Uh, love what kind of what we did as 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 a, as a winery, mm -hmm. and I would get calls after work and even on the weekends for people. I would say, "Would you come over and do a wine dinner? Kind of pair some wine with some food." Mm -hmm. And I would do it pro bono because it was just kind of like dress rehearsal, and um, and I loved it so much. People started paying me for it. So this was something that I knew was destined. I had mm -hmm. to I had to go back to it. So it took me a while to get to this point, but um, it's so much fun and so fulfilling too. So. So yeah. why militia? That's a yeah. that's a pretty conservative name. Are these <laughs> are these conservative tasting experiences that we're, that you're doing? Or I mean, what what kinds of things it, can people expect? It, no, that's a good question. We do get a couple of looks from the name. People are okay. like, "What is this? Uh -huh. What's going on? Why militia? Is do this you have a military? Gun? Do we have no? Oh, okay. The only guns we have are in the shape of bottles. Got it. Um, <laughs> no, sorry, I couldn't help it. It was like T-ball. No, unfortunately. But um, but yeah. So so the wine militia was kind of a, a funny name. Um, because I actually had a publication uh, called the Wine Militia Syndicate, and I'd write blogs and what have you on it, and uh, it just kind of stuck. It was it was edgy enough. We we do kind of out of the box events. So um, for instance, we'll do murder mysteries. We'll even do wine and music pairings. Is that <laughs> why we have a record player? Yeah. So so I yeah. actually haven't seen one of these. I have to tell you in about twenty years. Is that right? well? It's now new. It's like the which, it's, which was when I was born. 20, yeah, 20 years ago, nice. Oh, 21. 21 at least, yeah. So uh, what I can tell you though is um, a, lot of, a lot of millennials are getting into, obviously they're getting, getting smarter about wines, but they're huh? also playing with vinyl again. Really? Yeah. So is it like, is it cool now? Is it hipster? It, is it, it might like, be. If it's that, yeah, cool. if that's what you want to call it, hipster. Okay. Um, but it is, um, it is something that's kind of uh, the old kind of being rebirthed into the new again. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I thought it was inspiring. So um, so I thought this would be kind of a fun way to kind of showcase okay. what we do. So we, we're going to pair wines with music. We are. Okay. Typically, for the wine militia, we do live music pairings. Uh, so we'll get a band, and we'll, we'll actually we'll pair the wine with certain nuances in the music, whether there's swells or crescendos or it gets quiet or there's long sustains, and maybe there's arpeggiation. We, we get into all of that stuff, even with wine. So if there's like... A wine that starts kind of slow and kind of you know minimal, a little bit muted in, in its in its mouthfeel, and then it starts to open up a little bit. We get all excited about that, and we try to find a song that really works with that. So that's what we do. So typically, okay. this is kind of kind of what we we like to play with. So these aren't going to be shoe-in pairings, but um, I picked uh, I picked some some wines that I thought 
It's okay. It's my first time, Wouldn't so work. I won't actually know if it's not a good pairing. <laughs> so let's get into the wine. So tell me about our first pairing okay. today. Okay. So I picked these three wines uh, for this for for this type of pairing. I, I wanted to pick some wines that were super expressive, mm -hmm. um, kind of the unknowns for the most part, um, but something that kind of spoke to me and find find that. Uh, that had some emotion behind it a little bit, if you know what I okay, mean. Okay, okay. And by the way, we do have some folks out in the studio audience. <laughs> so if you're thirsty, please feel free to come on up. Absolutely. I mean, Lamar Absolutely. and I will drink all four bottles ourselves, but oh my god, maybe we I don't know. That that sounds like a nightmare. But oh. uh, but I would do it with these wines for sure. Okay. Um, so our first wine to to get back to that, um, I picked uh, a wine. It's a Charbonneau, actually. These mm -hmm. are all 2012, by the way. Um, and this is a Charbonneau from Moore Family Wines, uh, which is up in Kelseyville on your way to uh -huh. on Cobb Mountain, actually. So, um, so it's kind of kind of a little bit a uh, little bit odd to start with a non-Napa wine, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to kind of play with Charbonneau. Charbonneau's been around forever, obviously from France and the eastern side of France and the Savoie region. Um, in the Alps area, but for the most part, it's found its way over to the United States mm -hmm. in the 1800s. And uh, speaking of Inglenook, Inglenook was kind of one of the first uh, wineries to play with Charbonneau after Prohibition mm -hmm. to kind of help support the Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, because it's inky, it's brooding, it has, um, it has a lot in its color, and the aromas are just kind of over the top, plummy, a little bit of mm -hmm. black tea. Yeah, I get the black tea, definitely. Definitely. So it, it's it's taken seriously, but when you start to when you start to enjoy the flavor a little bit, I don't know what are you getting on this one. I'm gonna tell you, it's really perfumey. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of reminds yeah. me a little bit of like my grandma a little bit because it's okay. got this kind of spicy. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yep. we don't wear perfume like that anymore, especially <laughs> when you're wine tasting, don't wear perfume. Uh, but I would say definitely some dried rose petals. There's definitely like a, yep. this reminds me of my grandma. So Exactly. Which, exactly. So what are we going to pair this with? So uh, well, I love that you said that because uh, definitely not grandma music. But oh. um, but what's funny about this you one. You don't know I, my grandma. <laughs> it's real. I, I wanted to pair this with, uh, I thought, with someone like Lana Del Rey. Mm. Uh, because it's, she looks just like my she grandma. She looks like your grandma. Yes. She's wearing the same clothing, obviously. Uh -huh. yeah. um, no, but what's what's crazy is that when Lana Del Rey came out, um, I'm I'm a fan only because I think it's kind of that old sound brought new again, and kind of the same thing with Charbonneau. Kind of, and you know, her this, videos are amazing. Her videos are amazing. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so why don't we go ahead and, and uh, so big and, ups to Lana Del Rey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so what we want to do is when we start the song, the song's short. It's Blue Jeans by Lana Del Rey. Uh -huh. And what you want to do is you want to kind of sip. We'll kind of talk through it a little bit, okay. but we'll let you kind of kind of play. So I love Blue Jeans. You love Blue Jeans? Yeah, I'm I actually have that. two different versions of that song. Do you really? Yeah, I have one. One. <laughs> oh. Is, oh, there you go. We just went right into it. I love it. We just went right into okay. it. Okay, so what are we looking for when we're doing a music and wine pairing? So what I like about this is it's kind of it's kind of looming a little bit, and then. It no, kind of has this rock. like yeah, you do love punk rock. You get the goosebumps again. We do. Um, and, and James So, so kind of has this timeless sound to it. A little sexy. A little kind of kind of saucy, but. I, I gotta tell you, when she starts singing, it, it for me, I don't know what it is about it, but it's very like reminiscent of like, you know, the 50s a little bit. Uh-huh. And uh, kind of some of the ballads from the 50s. And what I what I love about um, about this particular song is because it's still kind of brooding a little bit, kind of like how this lingers in the finish. It has mm -hmm. a kind of a long sustain. And it sticks with you. It's one of those songs that you're gonna hum over and over again. So I thought that was perfect for this one. Again. There's a lot going on. There's still a little bit of that plum characteristic coming out. It's familiar enough as a fruit. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, it's a little bit familiar in terms of the song. You've heard it over and over again, but if you really kind of dissect it, it's mm -hmm. really kind of special in its own way. So anyways, I'm gonna stop talking so you can hear it a little bit. Okay. I just, so if you could taste this, it would taste like this course right here. <laughs> mm. So we did, we did an event just recently at one of the tasting rooms uh -huh. downtown Napa, 
with a live like duo flamenco guitar oh. um, uh, a duo. And what they did is they took, you know, flamenco guitars can be really bright and full of vivacity and, and a lot of energy. And what we found is if we took that kind of liveliness to it and the way that they actually, the technique of how they play the guitar, um, and we threw in some old rock and roll at them with some kind of rustic lines, um, it, it'll totally translate, and it did. We had people, we had, we had about 35 people, small event. Um, it, we didn't know if it was gonna translate with everyone. It mm -hmm. instantly translates. W live music is, it takes it to the next level. It's why Bottle Rock's so big. Um, it's why we love drinking and listening to music. I mean, this is like kind of on a, on a smaller scale, but um, definitely, definitely get the idea, right? Yes, So you It's very suggestive, because of course you say flamenco, so now I'm thinking Cuba, and now I'm like, oh my gosh. I love There's it. like a dried tobacco leaf quality in this wine, <laughs> which I didn't taste before, so I think you just put that thought in my head. It's true, it's true. So this was great. I think that anybody could, could do well one time, but let's, let's keep going, show me what else. Okay, okay, so, um, well this is good. Okay, so I have to give you a little bit of background. So when getting into wine, Originally from Canada in Saskatchewan, where we didn't have grapes growing, we had wheat, we had flax, we had minerals. Do they um, drink wine in Canada? They, I don't even know if they drink okay. wine where I'm from, but they drink beer. Uh, but what's fun about it? Oh, you can't look at this. Uh. You're gonna love this one. Okay. What's What's awesome is that I was I was involved in punk rock music. Why don't I go ahead and stop that real quick? Um, punk rock music and. Then I got involved in some like better music than punk rock music, where you actually had to play with some talent, and I started like, to play <laughs> notes. <laughs> play notes. Uh -huh. uh, still have to be lively, but um, I, I really loved uh, movie soundtracks. I mm -hmm. loved the idea of like expressing images with with sound design and music. And um, I think one of my favorite things was uh, actually it was the soundtrack Last of the Mohicans. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that movie? Yes, of course. I've, oh, of course, I've gosh. seen that movie. Incredible movie where you can tell there's this one pinnacle point in the end of the movie that it's all like if you took the music away from it, it wouldn't have the same effect at mm -hmm. all. Um, and that changed my life. I, I remember seeing that going, wow, this is this is amazing. If we could describe this in words, that would be amazing. Well, touring, playing in a rock band, coming down to California, and then needing a job in wine. You worked at a tortilla factory. I worked you? at a tortilla factory. How did you know that? Oh, oh no, no, no. We've talked about that before, actually. I just, I, I, I think it's hysterical. You threw that in hysterical. there. I did. I was an illegal immigrant. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Working in tortilla I'm good now. I'm good now. I have you're my green card. A, you're you're <laughs> so, so I needed to, I needed to learn how to describe wines. Okay. And uh, the best way that I could, I could do that was by describing musical interludes. And, and for some reason, um, I think people understood that. Like mm -hmm. when we were talking about, you know, if you're tasting a wine for a long period of time, there's, there's almost this like reverberation that resonates with you and you only because there's familiarity to it. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect segue for this next one. So do you want to, do you want to go ahead and, and I, I, tell I, us what we're, we're I, tasting? I jumped ahead. Um, so what we have here is, uh, ooh, I know this guy. <laughs> Actually, I'm glad you chose one. I know. So what we have here is uh, 1111 Syrah 2012 Oak Knoll District. 1111 is a fairly new winery. Uh, winemaker Kirk Vengi, much love there, of course, because uh, everything he touches turns to gold. But this is a really cool and sad vineyard. If you're familiar with Napa Valley, this Syrah vineyard, I'm going to get goosebumps because it, it makes me really sad, is right next to um, the Oak Knoll Inn mm. um, and was owned by two gentlemen. So perfect, it being Pride Week. Yeah. And one of them passed away. Oh, wow. um, and after that, none of the children wanted to take over the vineyard, so they sold the property. And actually, it was a steal. I don't know if this is true or not. Huh. I heard it was less than three million for no the whole way. vineyard. Um, so no way. cool winery. They they have you know their own Syrah that they own, and but then they're also sourcing from like you know a Baccio Galoup of yeah. Pinot Noir, and you know all all the cool players that and Kirk likes to mess around with. Yeah. So this will be fun because Kirk it, does amazing it, Syrahs. He does amazing Syrahs, and it's in the Vangi blood. I mean, he's been making wine mm -hmm. forever, but so it's um, actually super different for Kirk Syrahs. It, okay, so that's what that's what I thought. Uh -huh. I thought this is a little bit different for. A Vangi wine for sure for Kirk, mm -hmm. and what I thought was interesting was the story behind 1111 is is incredible to me because it was about how one of the owners met up on a plane next to another the other owner, uh, who obviously they weren't owners at the time, but they met up with each other, had a great conversation uh -huh. on the plane, 
had a very enriching moment. And then from that point on, it was, the rest is history. They started a winery. She was an older woman, and I can't remember her name, but I know that the other owner is Aurelian, um, who lives on the property. And um, he's a great guy, uh, has quite a bit of an art background, and obviously uh, it shows in the name. And if you've never been there, it's incredible. Um, we do some of our events there as well. But for the most part, I thought it was, it was serendipitous because it has kind of like a, a familiarity, especially right. for you. Yeah, I think uh -huh. it has a great yes. familiarity. And then the wine is... So I don't want to wait. What are we going to pair Let's, this with? Oh, okay. So I'm going to turn this up. So usually when Kirk Vangie does a Syrah, it tastes like bacon. It's like meaty, <laughs> smoky, iron blood. It's like the man's man Syrah. And this is actually kind of feminine for his style. Usually he uses toasted barrel heads. So you're going to pick up a lot of that smoke there in the finish. Okay. Let's see if you know this. Mm. Come on. You can't not taste a good Syrah without this song. Oh Come God. on. Come on, cheers. Wow. Cheers to you. This is take Berlin, my breath. right? This is Berlin. Berlin. So Berlin, Amazing. take my breath away. Oh. I, I have a soft spot in my heart for Terry Nunn, the singer. I think well, she hit on me in a concert once. Oh, you're I, lying. It's very, in my mind, she hit on me, uh, singing this song to me. I really believe that. Wow. Well, and as a musician, you know that any good song, if you want to make it great, you just sample some Berlin somewhere. <laughs> That's so not it's true. Kind of like, it's kind of like if you're going to get somebody a greeting card, it should have a monkey on it because scientifically, 11% <laughs> of the population prefers monkey cards to cards without a monkey. So 11% of the time, it works it's all the time. not dogs, monkeys, specifically monkeys? No, monkeys. I, see, I've been doing it all wrong then, the entire time. I'm here to help you. <laughs> well, thank you. So... Familiar, but totally different. Y you almost can remember the first time you, you saw Top Gun, heard this uh, song, and you're like, I'm just gonna Come tell on. you, this was a much better pairing than your first one. Absolutely. But it uh, helps because down. it resonates. There's, there's familiarity. There's familiarity, familiarity resonation, there, there's a long sustain like on Top this. I feel like I'm Top Gun all the time. <laughs> <laughs> For some, if they taste this, they're gonna think Tom Cruise, you know, Val Kilmer, um, oh, or not. <laughs> Mm. No, is that weird? No, that's that's totally appropriate. So I don't really. Totally I'm not a very good dancer, so this probably isn't so, right. So what's crazy? What I didn't know about Berlin is that she was not the original singer. Terry was not the original singer, but when she came on board and started to like, to like write songs with them and sing with them, their career just took off completely. Mm. And um, so I I think it's serendipitous as well with this whole 1111. Mm. They make their moment. It's the idea of like seeing the clock at 11.11. They had a serendipitous moment um, with the owners and then all of them coming together. Can we, can we pretend they're as good looking as Tom oh, Cruise? We're going to pretend. They are actually. I know. All of the owners are, are gorgeous from 11.11. Yeah. 11. I know you have a thing. You know who you are. That's easy. It's easy. It's true though. Uh, it's true. It's one of the first things you told me. Okay, so. So what do you, what do you, uh, what do you think so far? I mean. I think this is good, but I, I so. You know when I like something, yep. I want to like keep going. I want to like it totally. a lot. Totally, so yeah, absolutely. I want to jump ahead to the next wine because <laughs> oh, man. while you only thought that we were doing three, I, I thought, okay, so pairing wine with music, you have to put a lot of thought into it. Yeah, I think but so. But I don't think that you can do it on the fly. So I brought a little challenge <laughs> and I don't want to run out of time. <laughs> okay, good. Because Let's do it. Let's It'll keep going. Let's keep going. And you can't I'm, repeat I'm in, a song. That would be cheating. I, can, I can't what now? You can't repeat a song. That would be cheating. Oh, I would never do that. And you already took the pairing that I would have done with this Oh, line. is that right? Yeah. No, it's actually not right. I didn't think about oh, it. Oh, I'm so scared to know now. No. All right. Well, I think uh, we'll down this wine, down the hatch, mm -hmm. and then we'll move on to the mm -hmm. next one, which I'm excited about. So you're going to tell me about this wine? Yes. So my buddy Zeke, you know who Zeke is, Zeke yep. Hampton. Yeah, he was on our show a few weeks ago for wearing, Humanitas Wines. Was he wearing a Hulkamania shirt? Of course. He never yeah. takes that off. I let all of my guests borrow my, from my t-shirt closet, by the way. Zeke, if you're watching, you need to wash that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. And give it back to Christina. Please. It's awkward. Yeah, it really is. But it was the per it's great that Zeke and I are the same size. <laughs> well, perfect. And uh, speaking of Zeke, I mean, not to talk about him while he's not here, but he is like the king of vinyl, obviously. Um, a lot of people know that, but he has an incredible vinyl collection. I had to call him because I was going to bring out... Yeah, who has vinyl anymore? He has hundreds of vinyl, and Ugh. this is like a small, small amount for me. But um, it's really but inconvenient he... when you're in your car and you like want to change your record. <laughs> you you no, can probably okay. so, put this. No, I'm gonna get. <laughs> okay, we're, we're gonna get off right. track. We're okay, gonna, okay, keep going. So we are drinking David Arthur. David Arthur, 2012 okay. Napa Valley Old Vine. 
Cabernet? Okay, yeah, so this sets us up for the perfect musical pairing. Okay. We already know now that this guy's gonna be a badass. Who well, yeah. does Old Vine Cabernet Sauvignon? Who do Nobody does. David Nobody Long does. at David Arthur does. If you know David Long or have ever met him or seen him hop a, a bar or a counter at Rutherford Grill, that didn't happen. Um, it did. It did happen, but that's the rumor. On he Twitter, I heard is about it. a riot. He is like he is '80s glam to me. He is like what he was like Motley Crue when Motley Crue came out, breaking all the rules. They're breaking the rules in the wine industry. He's on Pritchard Hill. David Arthur. Some of the most expensive fruit in Napa Valley. So, so this I'm is, glad we're friends. I'll go ahead and take this home if you. Yeah want. no, okay. you yeah, know. <laughs> no, you guys can no, share. We can um, but honestly. Um, so I was referring to Zeke. Zeke and I went up to taste, and we were blown away by all the wines. And then when we had the price sheet in front of us, uh, we were a little bit shocked because we were expecting like three hundred, four hundred, mm -hmm. even five hundred dollar bottles. On of Pritchard wine. Hill, yeah, that, if you can buy it, if it, they, will it, if they will allow you to have that bottle, Don Brian. I'm looking at you. <laughs> so, so we realized that we were in good hands because these were not even half those prices. What? This bottle's one hundred fifty bucks. Um, all these wines are under 200 bucks, but this one, 150 bucks for this kind of Cabernet, that's... Oh. Um, and we get to drink it on a Monday. And then we get to drink oh. it on a Monday. So, because... This is reason enough to come and be a part of the studio audience. Really, it is. So, what are we going to pair this with? You can only pair badass with badass music, rat. And, uh, obviously... Um, first of all, mm. their hair is absolutely... Amazing. I'm going to tell you, I think this is David Long. I think that's I, him. I would be this guy. Oh, okay. Yep, I could see that. Mm -hmm. But uh, David, if you're watching... Um, oh, look, Johnny Depp was in Rat. I never knew that. <laughs> I, I channel you every time you sing in Rat. Okay. I know you're the really <laughs> So the we all singer. know that I'm very familiar with um, Rat. What song are we... I'm really actually not. I don't know. If well, we're going to we're gonna listen song, to... Let alone. Yeah, well, everyone knows Round and Round. Round and Round. Okay. You know, that we one. don't even need the record no. player. You can, we can no just have way. a sing-song. No way. But what, what I love about Rat is every song is hummable and it gets caught in your, okay. in your, in your mind. So let's, let's drop the needle here. Drop the needle. Drop so, the needle. That sounds like we're watching the This is Body Talk. Dirty, raunchy. This song is called Body Talk? Very sexy, though. It's just It's got rhythm to it. So I can, you have to like make hand signals yes, while drinking? If you've ever seen David drive his Porsche with the top down, he literally does this. Too, too much for two hands, so he does this. <laughs> and he, it's like too much rock for two hands. He has to do one. Oh. While driving, can I just say that that is not safe and we do not recommend you ever do that? I don't think, I, I, honestly, I don't think he cares. Um, Probably not. This Especially is when you're driving down Pritchard Hill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. So, I just, I love it. Oh, listen to that. Ugh. It screams, this wine. It's full of body, body talk. It's full of body. It's a big wine. It's kind of bad in its own way. It's kind of the James Dean of, of wine, in my opinion. So, um... There's I don't nothing know. bad about James Dean. There's nothing bad about it. And the thing is, is that it's drinkable now. Like, that's what's crazy. It yeah. says, enjoy from 2015 to 2028. No, it's totally drinkable now. Drink I'm going to age this about 45 minutes. Because <laughs> that's how long it's going to take me to get home. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. No, I'm not going home. You can't, you can't drink and drive with this. No, you no, have, no, no. This I'm not is going a home. sipper, but you can, feel, uh, you can feel bad. You can okay. kind of. So I do feel kind of bad, actually, now that Why? you're going to say that. Thanks for that segue I stole. Because you only have like 20 records here. You have no idea what I brought. I have no I idea. I put it in a sample bottle. Oh, no. So you couldn't be influenced by the bottle type or, or anything oh, in between. No. And okay. I, I really, I hate you for doing this David Arthur Cabernet. Why? Because this wine is not that good. So it's we gotta follow it up. It, it's gonna be it's gonna be like looking at your little sister in the shower. Like for a moment you want to go. I don't know what that's and then like. you're like, Thank oh, you. those images. You don't horrible. have a little sister. No, so I don't. don't really Thank know. God. Did you listen to Twisted Sister? I did. I actually that's what I grew up on. I grew really? up on The Maiden. I grew up on uh, Twisted Sister, Ozzy Osbourne, all that. So you were really into metal. Well, my dad is a pastor, and dad, oh. if you're watching, I love you, um, and mom too. But. <laughs> What I used Good to thing do, you threw that in there. I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you a story that I haven't told anybody. They, real quick, my dad used to collect sermon tapes to like 
think about his sermon and, and listen to sermons. And what ended up happening was um, I didn't have any tapes that were appropriate, so I no. took his tapes. You took the sermon tapes? Mm -hmm, and I copied over them. You know how you could put tape over them? No, Remember that? I didn't know that. You could put tape over top of the of the tapes. Are you old enough to know what tapes no, are? No, not really. No. Oh, Remember, dear God. 21. I I had CDs. <laughs> I'm just saying because my kids don't my really. They didn't know what that was. That's, They're like, what is that, Dad? No. Anyway, so I used to <laughs> I used to copy over his sermon notes with like Slayer or Iron Maiden. That's not appropriate for anyone. Um, so I apologize, Dad. What did Dad think about that? Did he um, ever catch you? Yeah. Oh, many times. Yeah, oh, many okay. times. Perfect. So anyway, that being said. Um, I uh, I grew up on that. You want to get, in, want to get into a mystery wine? I grew up on that. Yes, I'll let's do give it. you a clue. It's red. Okay. Okay. Thanks. What what vintage are we looking at? Twenty twelve. Oh, perfect. Okay. Oh, okay. I know twenty twelve. Okay. So let's see. Mm. Mm. I don't know if it's any good. Actually, let's just let's dive in. Little... Well, I'm gonna have to kind of shuffle a little bit to see what we have. So here's what I think will be interesting Ooh, because that could be dark. Okay, let's check it out. You are an advanced sommelier. Uh huh. <sighs> Yes. Studied under a great one, so I don't even think I need to tell you what it is. You can tell me. God, it's it wants it, it's red, but it wants to be it merlot. It is red. It wants to be a merlot. What do you mean it wants to be a merlot? You don't think it's a merlot? Did I tell you it's a blend? Is it a blend? Uh huh. Yep, sixty percent merlot. Bastard. But it is. It has merlot in it. Yes. <laughs> it has a lot of merlot in it. Actually, sixty percent. We said. Cab Franc. Nope. Oh, but thanks for, for guessing. Damn. Do you want to know what this is? So this is a 2012, it's a barrel sample. A little petite Of a there. little wine blend called Proprietus. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, we're bottling it next Sunday. Uh, Proprietus, if you don't know, this is our love child. I, we uh, actually, so the Merlot in this wine, Lamar and I hand This is so awkward. <laughs> September 22nd we, of 2012. We did. Uh, it's had extended barrel aging because we were too poor to buy glass. <laughs> so I think it's yeah. aged to perfection now. And uh, the grape gods actually uh, left us. This is this is the Merlot we picked? 20% Cabernet. This is awesome. And 10% Syrah. And I can't even tell you the producers. Cabernet. John Caldwell grew the Syrah. Get out. Uh, Julian Fayard. Thanks for the cab. Oh my god. So uh, two Napa Valley rock stars. Right, I, that created this blend. I'm uh, so blown. This is this is tough it's already. Like if you were going to have a menage a trois with three of the best winemakers God. in Napa Valley, uh, it would do. be in your glass right now. So what do you pair with? I don't that? even know. It's like in it's it's a genre of its own. Oh well, you know what I would do. Hold on, genre of its own, Bjork. Oh, Hands see, down. I, I would have Hands gone Jurassic down. Park theme song. Or or would it be a classic like the 40s, 30s? Oh, that Iron Maiden looks sexy. But you know what I would do? I'd pair, pair, uh, pair Bjork with it. You'd pair? I would pair a Bjork with it. With Bjork. I would. Um, okay. What Bjork song? Really, like Hyper Ballad? Well, um, no. mm, it's a little, that's a little much. Oh. But let me taste this again, though, real quick, because how much so, time do we have? So okay? if you haven't tasted this wine. We do? If okay, you great. haven't tasted this wine before, I'm just going to tell you, um, our Merlot was not very good. Like, imagine cherry lemonade, and she was all, like, broken apart and disjointed. And I blind tasted you on it before, yeah. like, two years ago, and you're like, this is shit, what is this? <laughs> and it's still actually not very good. I don't think I said that. Very good. I might have, I might have uh, said that. But the Cabernet, I think, helps quite a bit. Um, we're too poor to really make a good wine. So it, we used once used barrels that so, were used for two years, <laughs> but it actually picked up quite a bit of oak from it. So what's the vision for this one then? Like when is it being bottled? We're bottling it on Sunday. Come Get on out. Uh, we need yeah, free labor. share the love, share the love. We uh, need everyone any, to try anybody it. Anybody have two free sets of Free labor. We have God now because we it. added uh, some gifts from the wine gods. We now have a hundred cases by I, the way. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do I have to buy my own my own bottles? Yes, okay. you do. Uh -huh. awesome. Or you can work for them. My car needs to be washed. It's real. <laughs> okay. Uh, the best thing about home winemakers is, so we just drank a $150 bottle of Cabernet. Uh, this one cost us $5 a case to produce. Thank you, friends. Oh, that's awesome. Um, our that studio real? audience is actually drinking this out of the bottle, so. Okay, it's, so. I guess it's a porch pounder. It <laughs> Uh, what is it? What would be a price point for something like this? Well, you know, it's arbitrary. I would just make it up, throw a dart, spin the wheel. All right, I'm. I'm I would say you could probably get 
a solid $38 for this wine. 38 bucks? Uh, yeah, shipping's included. <laughs> Dear God. 39? You All pay right. 39 like Sold. that. We have 40, 40, it's 40, 40. It's really good, actually. I'm very impressed. Genre of its own. Okay. This is so funky and weird. Oh my God. <laughs> like what Bjork. What are we listening to? This is, it's, it's not up to you, little Bjork. What song are we pierking with yeah. this wine? <laughs> Bjork. This is Bjork. This is great. She likes to magnify little pussy willows blooming in the spring and making sounds out of them. That's not Icelandic at all, and I'm sorry for all my friends that are Icelandic. Again, I'm sorry um, for attempting. But I love Bjork. Bjork is incredible. I know you um, like Bjork. I'm actually, I'm really actually quite happy that you're going to pair Bjork with this wine because what people probably don't know about you is Lamar has a huge crush on Bjork. <laughs> Bjork is actually Lamar's secret, this the is, one. Like, you know that one true. you get a pass on? Like, if you could actually get close enough to her to do anything with her, that was your No, one. that is true. Yeah, that is true. That is true. If you could have one person on an island, if your you way, jerk, it, would be, it would be Bjork. Yes, we would. We would. Hopefully Absolutely. there's a cliff on your island. Absolutely. I don't know. There's something so hot about her voice. Are you saying my wine's hot? Like Again, it is a little okay. I think we're we reading it on too September much into the 22nd this. because it was a little hot. I, I'm going to be honest with you. This is actually. Um, you can drink it without wait, making comes, a funny face. Here comes. Dude, <laughs> this gives me that feeling. I don't know. Where exactly is that feeling? Easy, Tiger. <laughs> it's, just, it's an honest question. There, there's there's a, there's some angular mid palate going on, which I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Alcohol low on this, fourteen two. Um, the alcohol on this, if you put it into perspective, is very low for uh, Kirk Vengi over seen wine. Um, <laughs> we're not going to be exporting this to China, which means that I can lie by one point five percent, just like my weight, my age, and my height. So I'm gonna go, yeah, the fourteen two. To fourteen eight. So this could possibly okay. So it could be it could be up yeah fourteen eight. It's it's intoxicating. It, it for doesn't sure. smell alcoholic. It smells well, of course. super vibrant. I mean this is it, it, it. There's syrah in it, and there's how much syrah? Eight to ten percent. God, I can we, smell uh, we that. We eyeballed though. this actually out of the barrel. No way. Yep. Damn. Okay. All right. So I have to tell you, this is to me. This is this is a great pairing because. You have you have this crazy woman who wears swans around her neck, uh, and then We've makes all done that, that makes one time. instruments out of nothing. And I think that that's a pretty good, uh, I mean, a pretty good analogy for yeah, this we wine. We made wine out of nothing. It it was it was one of those things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So anyway. So, oh my gosh, this was so much fun. I had fun. I, I hope you did. I hope you had fun. Cheers. Uh, thanks for inviting me, though. Uh, thanks for bringing great wine. <laughs> You're welcome. It's the least I could do. Both of them. Exactly. I'll, sh I'll trade you, actually. I'll trade you. I'll yeah. take that home. Even Steven. Absolutely. That's awesome. I love this oh. wine. So I'm I got to tell it. you, um, we have to sign off. Okay. All right. I'm going to go see Jurassic World. Oh, nice. That would have been the song nice. I would have paired with this wine. It goes kind of like this. Na, 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 <laughs> na, na, na. You know, because it just kind of opens so soft, and then it's like... Da, da, da. Like Great dog. soundtrack. I, if you could hum that for me, I'll just. Na, 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 na. No, maybe uh, later. I remember that soundtrack very oh. well. When they come up to the island and the wall, anyway. No, I this was so much fun. I, I really appreciate you, Lamar. Oh, I appreciate thank you. the wine militia. And I just want to tell you, like, even though we're here, we're drinking great wines, we're tasting great wines. We are. I learned something. Oh, good. And it was the most important part. We just had a ton of fun. We did. We had a great time. And so it was like fun guaranteed. Is there like a money back guarantee if you don't have fun with the Moine Militia? <laughs> there it is now. So you saw it on Toot Sweet, and we will see you in a few weeks. Cheers. Cheers. And thank you. Cheers to you. Oh, oh. Yeah. That was fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, was, that was a lot of fun. That one's actually really good. I know. Aren't you so happy? I, I am, actually. From where it came. And I was like, what wine am I going to drink? Oh, oh, this oh, I don't know. totally stunned me. I picked up Merlot, but god damn. I mean, Derek go freaking blend some. way too delicious. Oh, my god. <laughs> <laughs>
That was yeah. awesome. Thanks, you yeah, guys. No, no I'll, drink, I'll drink this one if that's okay with you. Yeah, you can have that. Sweet. I really am going to Jurassic Park. Are you really? <laughs>